Hello, writers. Welcome to this week's Writer's Tool Shed. Weeks have an example story. Troy looked past the colonnade out to the wide grounds of the estate. The scene was an idol with green rolling grass, scattered trees, a pond sparkling under the bright sun. The birds twittered, the squirrels chased their tails, even the lazy badger trotted along head high, looking more chipper than usual. But the mood was broken by a sudden cry. A burly figure in a hooded cloak strode through the grass, dragging behind him a woman with long golden hair. I beseech you, sir, please let me go, the woman begged. Troy stared, confounded. Who was this woman and who was her captor? What were they doing at Allerton Hall? Our first word is idol, which is a noun, and it means a view of peaceful nature. So this painting is an idol because you see the green grass, the flowering branch, and then the people who are lying down peacefully. Um, idol is a homonym, so you have three different spellings, but they're all pronounced the same. Um, idol is the peaceful nature. Idol is a statue that you would bow down to. Idol means not doing the work that you're supposed to be doing at the moment, kind of lazy. And so this week we're focusing on the first one. Second word is chipper, an adjective in an upbeat, lively mood. If you've ever seen the show Naruto, Naruto is a ninja who's very chipper. He's always being positive, encouraging people. He's kind of like a cheerleader for himself, but also his friends. Um, chipper versus cheerful. If you're cheerful, it means you're in a happy mood, you're uh, going along, you're positive. But chipper has this more outgoing, more outward, bouncy, lively kind of sense to it. And cheerful is hardly ever used in a negative way, but sometimes you can be too chipper. Like sometimes you can be chipper to the point where you're annoying the people around you, but it's mostly a positive word. Burly is an adjective, big, muscular, rough. This guy is burly looking. He's uh, well built. He's got those wide shoulders and the big arms. Um, shades of meaning, burly versus strong. Strong focuses specifically on your capable capability. Like, are you strong? Can you lift this much? Then you're strong. Can you push this? Then you're strong. But burly focuses more on the outward appearance. So it has that sense of like, you're, you're rough looking, you're muscular looking instead of necessarily your capability. Beseech is a verb to ask urgently, plead. This guy is pleading, he's beseeching maybe his boss for something. Um, if you have beseech versus beg, when you're begging, you're asking for something, yes, but beseeching has this extra urgency to it. Um, you're beseeching because you're desperate. You really, really need the thing that you are asking for. Um, so if there were kind of like, greater or lesser, I would say beg would be lesser and beseech would be greater to a greater degree. Last one is to confound, to cause someone to be confused to the point where they're stuck. The golfer says, I'm confounded. There's no hole on this green. So he was trying, he was hitting his golf ball and he was trying to hit it to the hole, but then he got there and then there's no hole and he's confounded. There's nothing to do. He can't see what to do next. Um, and that's the main difference between confound versus confuse. Confuse, um, if you're confused, you aren't sure what to do, but you might try one thing and then you try another thing. And there are s possible options in front of you. Like you could ask a question, you could ask for clarification. But if you're confounded, then you're stuck. You have reached the end of the road. And so you just kind of like stand there without doing anything. So let's read our story one more time. Troy looked past the colonnade out to the wide grounds of the estate. The scene was an idol with green rolling grass, scattered trees, a pond sparkling under the bright sun. The birds twittered, the squirrels chased their tails. Even the lazy badger trotted along head high, looking more chipper than usual. But the mood was broken by a sudden cry. A burly figure in a hooded cloak strode through the grass, dragging behind him a woman with long golden hair. I beseech you, sir, please let me go, the woman begged. Troy stared, confounded. Who was this woman and who was her captor? What were they doing at Allerton Hall?